In this video, we are checking out the art of Russ Nicholson. Snackworks Studio. Greetings Art and Oldhammer fans, my name's Marcel and welcome to Snakeworks Studios, where it is our mission to help you, you, explore the hobby. So Russ Nicholson did some early art for Games Workshop. He was around back in the days when I was a wee lad. Now, Russ is noted for his very detailed art style. His art, his art, his art style is very dynamic and technically brilliant. Russ Nicholson contributed to the art of Games Workshop right from the early days onwards up to the late 80s, I believe. So let's jump in and have a look. Russ Nicholson, age 38, race another Scotsman, star sign Scottish, strange alternative occupation illustrating bunty annuals, favourite music, classical, folk and country, hobbies, collecting newspaper comic strips and books, ambitions, to develop printmaking of all kinds. And I do wonder if Russ Nicholson succeeded in this. So first up is a lovely piece of artwork, which I assume was made to go along with the release of Rogue Trader, or sometime thereabouts, and features a set, a set, a group of space marines fighting against what I think is orcs. It's hard to make out any opponents here in this picture, but at the bottom right, there is definitely an orc wearing some armor, which reminds me of that worn by the bad guys in the Conan movie. Um, what I do like about this is the very, very old style Land Raider, which is in the middle of the picture there, but also the sort of sea crescent muzzle flashes of the bolters. I think you also see this on the cover art of Rogue Trader. The Crimson Fists bolters have that sort of crescent shaped muzzle flare and I think that's fantastic. Next up we have a very upset looking man having a chat with a dwarf. Well I don't know if he's having a chat, perhaps he's ignoring the dwarf, but the dwarf does not look happy. There's a few people also in the background who also don't look happy. But when I take a closer look at this, I do love all the like cross hatching uh, methods of shading going on. You can see a lot of it around the clothing and the walls in the background. This is beautiful. A very dark picture up next, which appears to be a man. Perhaps he is a magician or some sort of character of sorts standing in a very dark room full of stuff looks to be a few barrels maybe there's some alcohol or maybe he's forging some weapons and he's standing next to a very hot looking fire and interestingly you can see the fire is very bright using absolutely no shading at all apart from that in the actual fireplace itself and then the rest of the piece is very highly shaded giving some wonderful wonderful contrast there Next up, we have a skeleton man, and I have no idea what this is supposed to be uh, representing. However, if you take a closer look, it appears he has some kind of cat creature, or is that a spider, crawling around or out of his neck. I have no idea what that's supposed to be, but I love it. Uh, again, we have the very bright, minimal shaded fire effects going along with the rest of the piece. This is brilliant. Uh, also, down the bottom left, originally I thought that looked like a facehugger from Aliens, but on closer inspection I can see that it's just a plant. A very, very busy piece up next, and at first glance this looks like a mess, and then you look a bit closer and you can see that it is a fantasy piece of, again, some orcs, I believe, fighting against some humans. And uh, front and centre there is a knight on top of his steed, uh, fighting against a dwarf with an axe and a shield. There are plenty of other knights in the picture, and I do like the winged helm 
that the knight is wearing. Again, there is a lot of cross hatching and stippling shading, and this adds a lot of lovely looking texture to the piece. Sanguinius up next, or someone who reminds me of Sanguinius. It's a very beautiful looking chap with his bow here, fighting against what could possibly be some undead maybe? A little bit like uh, Jason and the Argonauts perhaps. Uh, there's a few interesting characters there in this mob. Uh, there's your Sanguinius alike up the top and there's a few guys flanking him. I think the uh, person on the right there is a young lady and she has fantastic eyeshadow going on. Or maybe that's some face paint. The uh, chap in the bottom right, the skeleton there, does remind me a lot of the Graveguard from Warhammer Fantasy. I don't know if they're still a thing. If you know if they're still a thing, let me know in the comments below. Hello there. Sorry for interrupting, but if you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That means you, John. A siege looking piece of artwork next, and maybe this was to go along with Warhammer Siege and the Mighty Fortress. Who remembers that kit? Who had one of those kits? Let us know in the comments below. I do like the uh, way you can see the salvos being fired from atop the uh, fortification there into the poor souls below. You can even see some individual arrows falling onto the attacking or opposing army. This again appears to be humans versus humans. It's quite hard to make out, although there appear to maybe be some orcs in there and maybe be some dwarves. However, who is on whose side is very hard to make out. Another fortification piece, and I do wonder if this was also to go along with a Warhammer Siege or the Mighty Fortress, and this time it's a sort of goblin looking chap, uh, almost a cross between a human and a goblin, and there's some humans maybe surrendering on top of the ramparts up there, but I do like the way the chainmail has been uh, portrayed by all these little circles and, and it adds so much texture to the piece and looks very interesting to my eye. Next up is what I assume is an early orc. He kind of reminds me of an alien of sorts. I don't know why. I feel I may have seen this head in something else somewhere, although it doesn't quite come to mind at the moment. If anyone can remember what I think I'm seeing in the face of this orc, then please let us know. Uh, he is quite large, as you can see by the way the head is scaled against his victim's head, which is um, about a third of the size of his head, so he must be quite a large chap indeed, although he does have a massive head and very small feet, which is interesting. I also like the uh, shape of his knife. It almost looks as if he ran out of time drawing this because that is very basic compared to the rest of the piece. Interesting. In this piece, I'm going to assume this is some kind of tavern from the fantasy universe. Perhaps it's the green dragon or the prancing pony, but you can see a lot of drunk looking chaps with uh, some lovely basin haircuts. I think I myself had one of these haircuts when I was a youngster before I became cool. And I did originally think that in that man's cup was a fish. <laughs> but on closer inspection, it's not a fish. I think it's just some background piece looking like it's in the cup. But it's very interesting in the fact that no one here appears to be the main character. It does just look to be a background piece. But on the left, you have a couple of maybe authoritarian figures there with their three pointed hats, or maybe some kind of naval uniformed agents of a sort. I don't know. If you know what any of these characters are, then please let us know in the comments below. So there you have it, the art of Russ Nicholson. Well, some of it anyway. What did you think of Russ Nicholson's artwork? Which was your favourite piece of artwork we saw? Do you think perhaps his artwork 
was too detailed. Do you prefer Russ's fantasy or 40k artwork? I've got a bleach mark on my jumper here. It's terrible. Would you put Russ's artwork on your wall? Have you ever tried to draw your own Warhammer themed artwork? I remember trying it back when I was a lad. It looked pretty terrible I would imagine. My favourite piece was the Mark VI Space Marine with the army of marines around him. I loved all that detail. I remember, um, I remember when we were at school and we had to try and shade with cross hatching and stippling and it was quite difficult. I think it was a proper comic book. A proper comic book? A proper comic art style back in the day. Well, I assume they still do it these days. Anyway, so we had a go at the cross hatching and stippling and I would imagine it Hello? Wave. Wave up there. Yeah. Chaka 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 chaka. So anyway, what I think I'm trying to say is my work was nowhere near good. Nowhere near good? Well, it's probably nowhere near good. It was nowhere near as good as Russ Nicholson's. Anyway, if you'd like to support the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below. If you'd like to see some more Old Hammer art themed videos, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels. Yeah.